Welcome back to the Deadology Podcast from Pencil Hill Studio, New Paltz, New York. I'm your host, Howard Weiner. Today is February 19th, 2024, and we're in the middle of Jerry Garcia Band Month. This is the third installment featuring uh, Jerry shows. The first first week we did uh, Pacific High Studio, probably the best show ever from... Uh, 1972, and uh, week two was a Swigo, another powerhouse uh, show from 1980, and today we're going to move forward to 1983. Uh, this is going to be a West Side Story in the Roseland Ballroom. Uh, those great shows, back-to-back nights, May 31st and June 1st. So the Jerry Garcia Band... Uh, for the East Coast, part of that tour started off in Buffalo in Shea Auditorium on May 25th. Uh, they played Rochester the following night, the 26th, and then they played Cape Cod on May 28th. I didn't know about any of these three shows. I picked up the tour in Hartford on May 29th, but goddamn, that Cape Cod show on May 28th, I've rated it in my book, Positively Garcia, I rated it the second best show of all time the ending is like that strong like there's four unbelievable best ever versions to close the show out but i won't get into that i'm going to save that cape cod show for another for another night Uh, there'll be more jerry garcia band stuff as uh the dead allergy podcast rolls forth so i'll get to that cape cod show probably uh on the anniversary date um so personally i pick up the tour in hartford may 29th the bushnell auditorium what a beautiful place to see the Garcia band. I mean, we were so freaking lucky catching catching Jerry in these incredible venues. Um, we were never 83, 84. We thought this would go on forever. But eventually, the Grateful Dead, Jerry Garcia, just became too popular. They couldn't play the, these small venues with a few exceptions. They did that Lundfontein uh, run in 1987. But this really was like the last of the Mohicans, the 83, 84 tours, man. Incredible seeing Jerry in these beautiful, small places. So the Bushnell Auditorium, May 29th, great show. May 30th was a Saturday, and this was the as close as I ever came to being shut out of a Grateful Dead or Jerry Garcia band show. I went up there with um, Doug Perry, a couple of friends I've talked about on the podcast before, and Bob Hester, who I believe is a listener to this uh to this podcast bob what's up buddy that night on uh, may 30th it was incredible we get up there we get out of the car we showed up a little late no tickets anywhere in sight no chance of getting in and we're walking around the bushnell our feet was deter was seemed determined here we're gonna go home and it was gonna be one of those unfortunate nights where you didn't get in but then a side door just opened up and about my my group and about 25 other hippies just charged up that up the stairs like bolted right up the stairs so we were in that upper deck in the mezzanine and it was it was done man we got in it was it was like a miracle you know it was that there were no miracles to be had that night but the side door opened for me and about 30 people we got into that show and another uh, great show on this tour but the bushnell shows really as good as they were, they didn't compare to these Roseland shows. They were just insane how good these shows are. So Jerry was definitely psyched. Jerry, Khan, uh, Melvin Seals, I mean, they, they were psyched. This is like an off-Broadway show in, in a beautiful, beautiful venue, uh, the Roseland Ballroom. And um, once upon a time, I, I, I didn't see much in that area, but I once saw an off-off-Broadway show. It was called La Cocina. If I remember correctly, the, uh, the the producer and writer of that show was George Costanza. 
And it was the main character. It was a chef. His name was Pepe. And um, there you go, folks. A little Seinfeld reference for fans of that show. Um, but this was definitely, The Roseland was definitely a show about something. Uh, man, they, they, they were on fire this night. So they, they come in May 31st. First show kicks off with Rhapsody in Red. And the introduction to the podcast is, you know, the, the beginning of Rhapsody in Red. And just to put it in perspective for me at the time, I'm, I'm at the show. I hear the beginning of this, this Rhapsody in Red. I don't know that it's Rhapsody in Red. It sounds like lead rock to me because it's the same exact chord progression until Garcia hits that do 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 and um off we go with Rhapsody in Red I didn't didn't know it at first but after a few, hearing it a few times I was in love with Rhapsody in Red um at the last show of this tour they played both Let It Rock and Rhapsody in Red in the in the same same night at the Tower Theater on June 5th that was incredibly exciting but man, did I learn learn to love Rhapsody in Red and quick. So um, wh- one other thing about the, the Rhapsody in Red, the reason I didn't know it at that time was I got into the Grateful Dead 81. I bought a bunch of their albums. And from that point forward, it was all bootleg tapes. Forget the albums. So I never listened to Cats Under the Stars at this point. Uh, I didn't know Rhapsody in Red. Um, but... That Cats Under the Stars album, which they featured a lot on this particular tour, the best Jerry Garcia band album, it featured all Garcia Hunter songs. It it was all the members of the Jerry Garcia band. This is this studio album is up there with anything the Grateful Dead did. Um, definitely the, the the top uh, whatever the top Grateful Dead albums are, Cats Under the Stars is right up there with it. You know, just an incredible album. Um, you know, one day I'm going to go into that, that deeper, but Rhapsody in Red, I got to know it very well. So what a great show to kick a kickstart, a, kickstart an evening, man. Just, uh, Garcia comes out, he's happy, Rhapsody in Red, and that blues lick and that just nonstop gnarly blues coming at you hard and furious. 1983, man, Garcia brought the heat. He was just like, beside what he looked like on stage incredible just like you know just so much energy you know that uh this is why I mean, people looked at jerry like jerry is god he, i mean he, we, he was the best guitarist in the world no matter what demons or addictions he was, he was going through at the time just listen to some of the stuff on this show and after a great rhapsody in red the, the one the following night is even better but um we we get love each other in the second spot as if it's a grateful dead show Except uh, Melvin Seals is on uh, organ here, and the funky feel of the Love Each Others, man, that that Garcia band with Melvin played, nothing like it, man. It just it, it it took it up just a notch from. There's not a lot of. It took it up a notch from where the Grateful Dead were doing it, and this particular version is my favorite. I think it's the best ever. Um, I, I uploaded um, this version to the Deadology podcast page. Um, if you want to join the group, you just want to go in there, you know, ch- check out whatever Facebook Deadology podcast group, um, type it in and we got the, the love each other up there. Also, it's on my YouTube page, the positively Garcia page It's a bunch of the, uh, versions I'm going to talk about are here, but, uh, Garcia just rips like two crazy, uh, a two tiered solo in this love each other. You listen to it and you'd be like. Yep, <laughs> that's the best one. You, you can't argue it. And in my book, Positively Garcia, I ranked this May 31st Roseland show as the seventh best show ever. And part of the reason is there's four versions on this night, which are best ever versions, I believe. And the following uh, song, That's What Love Will Make You Do, which is a great follow-up for Love Each Other. Uh, Jerry's definitely in an upbeat mood on this night. You know, a lot of uh, positivity coming out of them. The um, that's what love will make you do. This is even this is the best version, even more so than the love each other before it. This is how great the show is getting started. A show that is get, getting off to here. You know, Jerry is in New York City. It's 1983. The Westies are. are this is Hell's Kitchen, man, and he, he's got a great band. Up, he's up there with an incredible band, man. So you know, he's got Khan. Melvin Seals, 
and Gregorico, uh, the drummer from Sly and the Family Stone, was up there. He only played with uh, Garcia Band a short time, uh, less than a year, but he was here this tour, and what a great drummer he is. Dee Dee Dickerson and Jacqueline LeBranch on vocals. This was just like a perfect uh, incarnation of the uh, Jerry Garcia Band. And they did an incredible That's the Love Will Make You Do here. They get into that funky Garcia band rifting in the middle with with uh, Melvin. And, man, there's, there's nothing like it. So no, wor- no further words could do it justice. Here's the ending rip to that That's What Love Will Make You Do from the Rosa. Jerry working eight days a week and giving it all to you and giving it to the Roseland that night, man. Uh, just listen to that guitar playing and how beautiful and excited his voice is. You know, it doesn't get better than that. That's what love will make you do in the Roseland. Uh, so song number four, um, rolling right along Valerie in the fourth spot and to me, this is prob- this is the most underrated uh, Jerry Garcia band tune. It came out on the Run for Roses album, 1982. I don't think it's even been represented on any uh, official Jerry Garcia release after that. But what a great song, man. Hunter's uh, lyrics again shot my dog because he growled at you. And that in- just a, an insane blues solo, tight, uh, not too long. Uh, but just one of the coolest blues solos. It's really, uh, it's unbelievable that they uh, Jerry stopped playing this. Um, I don't think he played it uh, after after his coma. There's a, a lot of songs fall into that uh, category from like 1983. Like Rhapsody in Red, I think, was last played in 1985. 
So, uh, yeah, that, that's why I love this period so much. There's these, these great songs. And to hear Jerry going off on that, the, that the one solo in the middle of that, Valerie, um, yeah, priceless, man. The, um, I think the best version ever, New Haven, June 17th, 1982, even though this Roseland runs right up there, Jerry's ripping on this night. Um, also, the Music Mountain one, the night before New Haven, is very good. But that this, if you get a chance, check out June seventeenth, eighty two, New Haven. Uh, that's another one that's up on my Positively Garcia page. Uh, so, after an, an awesome version of Valerie, uh, the Jerry's just full of joy. So, and an, an unusual move. He plays How Sweet It Is in the fifth spot. It just, you know, it's usually an opener or an encore. Uh, but, you know, Jerry's just feeling it, man. He's out there in front of New York City, this big, beautiful ballroom. Everyone's totally into it, having a great time. He just breaks out How Sweet It Is. And once again, just another incredible version. Great guitar jamming here. Um, Music Mountain, uh, I probably would rate as my, my, my favorite uh how sweet it is, but this one's pretty close, as is the one he would play as an encore for the second night at the Roseland. Just uh, Jerry's Jerry's in the mood and just so optimistic about what's coming coming forward on this night. I think um, you know that's why I picked this show as number seven um, in my Positively Garcia book. Uh, the second set is great here too, uh, but there's just something unique about the whole optimistic positive feel feel of this show as opposed to the the next night which is which is a great show in its own right uh but but a little bit of a different feel a darker feel to it uh so jerry closes out the first set with run for the roses um you know on this night i was very happy to see it Uh, run for the roses was a pretty regular tune it was kind of like the jerry garcia bands uh don't ease me in or uh, obviously a much better song you know once again great songwriting from a uh, hunter but basically a song where you're not going to catch a huge jam it was you know um kind of almost like yeah I, I guess it was like that one song at the end of the at the end of a dead first set that you weren't nuts to see but it was popular and it got the crowd going so uh run for the roses closes out just a great first set i put this this first set of um as far as jerry garcia band shows go right up there with music mountain uh, except in a way, it's just there's something just jubilant about it, man. It's a, it's, a, it's such a unique uh, performance. And they uh, pick right up, second set, everything. Uh, <laughs> man, this harder they come to, to open this second set. Uh, the Jimmy Cliff underdog anthem, just I- incredible. It's 15 minutes of pure joy. Now, now there's the Roseland ballroom out there, and there's just crazy deadhead dancing going on during this if, if you listen to this version um I'm, I'm gonna have to throw this one up on the positively garcia page i don't know if it's up there but it's just it, it's insane um you know Gar- garcia's playing so hot singing's great and once again the sound of this band Khan, seals and garcia they just built this nucleus of, uh, of sound they would do these reggae riffs. You hit the middle of this, and it's reggae. It's calypso. It's 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 a Brazilian dance song. It's the coolest thing I ever heard. It sounds like it should be the uh, a theme for a chock full of nuts commercial or something. It's uh, what what they do here is so brilliant. And right now I'm gonna play a, a clip from this harder that they come, which is one of the most probably the best version I ever heard. I I love the way this Garcia band plays it. I think it's better than the Keystone versions. Um, your thoughts? Check it out. Thank you. 
off the second set you gotta love that harder they come man people were spinning dancing it was a wild scene on that uh ballroom floor uh man what a place that was it's kind of hard to remember it was almost 41 years ago i was there but there was like bars all around the place it was just like this big beautiful open venue uh great place to dance and rave and uh just garcia took the place over and uh, so that that's just so funky that harder they come man. nothing like it incredible so after that uh jerry breaks into mission in the rain excellent version um a little nitpicking here the 1981 mission in the rains are the best uh just the the way jerry went off on those uh, guitar jams uh but very strong version here but um like you know they they, they just didn't have that extra um, the extra whatever, man. Jerry was emotionally committed to Mission in the Rain, like the 1981 versions, Albany, Capitol Theater, 11-4, uh, 11 um, but still awesome to catch Mission in the Rain, second spot. Everybody's digging it. The show's rolling along. And then um, Jerry decides to go with the first slow tune of the night. But what a perfect time to... To deliver this um, Mississippi Moon, the Peter Rowan song, and just the, the, Jerry's version here—it's so unique, so cool. It just it, 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 there's nothing like it. How he takes somebody else's song and just turns it into this like slow-moving, um, out of mind, just. Ballad here, it's it's crazy, man. I love I love the Mississippi Moon, uh, just such a unique uh, Jerry Garcia band sound to it. And the cool thing about this version is one of my favorite. You, you, sometimes you hear a verse in a dead song or a Garcia song, and you fall in love with that one verse. You're like, my God, that's Jerry at his best vocally, and that's what happens here in this Mississippi Moon which I think is like the fourth best ever version 
uh, from this Roseland show up to this point. So let's jump right back to the audio and check out these incredible, this incredible verse of Mississippi Moon, Senor Garcia. to the Mississippi moon. Time traveling back to the Roseland Ballroom, 1983. What a night it was for the Jerry Garcia band and those devotees that followed him around. So uh, after Mississippi moon, time for some Bob Dylan, man. It's uh, been, been a set and a half, no Dylan songs yet. Got a little tangled up in blue. And when I listened back to this show, I was kind of surprised it was a better Tangled Up in Blue than I had remembered, man. Very hot. Uh, the one from Cape Cod a few days earlier on, the, on May 28th is the best. Uh, but I was really kind of surprised that it was a better Tangled Up in Blue than I remembered. Very hot. Uh, so the show's rolling along. And then um, after Tangled Up, it's kind of unusual the, the, way it, the, the way it rolled here. After Tangled Up, they do um, Gamora, another Cats Under the Stars gem. Uh, another just brilliant Garcia Hunter tune, um, going back to biblical times, or it could even be applied, uh, applied Sodom and Gomorrah to, uh, 1983 New York City, Hell's Kitchen, uh, uh, the Westies, uh, you know, def- definitely it was a different time in New York City, so the song kind of hit the, uh, uh, it was, it was right, it was right in step with what was going on in New York City, a great version of Mago- of Gamora, um, and this song really with uh, Dee Dee and Jacqueline on on backup vocals, just so soulful, brilliant. And the set closes out with Deal, and I feel this is where maybe Jerry got a little tired towards the end of the night. You know, obviously it's a good version of Deal. Anytime Jerry Garcia band goes out in in this era and plays Deal, it's hot. Um, but what he did with Deal. The following night in the Roseland is is devilish. It is crazy. It puts this one to shame. But uh, hey, they close out uh, this second set with Deal. It's been a brilliant show. And a final a final song to uh, say goodnight to everybody. Midnight Moonlight. And how that was that was such a cool encore. I, I always like it, enjoyed it. It was it was bittersweet uh, because the, the night's over and you're not getting another long tune. But hey, Midnight Moonlight, just what a great, great song, man. Uh, Jer- Jerry Garcia band, uh, you know, Midnight Moonlight, just rocking out to that. Night's over. It's it's so uh, symbolic of what, what the Jerry Garcia band was, man. Midnight Moonlight to close. So that's May 31st, 1983, an unforgettable night. And what happened is we left the show that night. It was kind of crazy, too. I'm with my friend Doug. 
Um, very hot night. It was very hot in there. Uh, a lot of dancing, a lot of sweating. Uh, not sure exactly what the temperature was, but it felt like uh, an early summer day, 80, 90 degrees. And two amazing things that, that I'll never forget from after the show. One, I'm with Doug. He's a Philadelphia 76er fan because of uh, Julia Serving. And that night was the fourth game of the championship series, and they beat the Lakers in a sweep 4-0. to zero. So we're catching the very end of the game. And I'm not a Sixer fan. I was rooting for the Lakers at the time, but the series was over, so I didn't care. I, I knew this, it, was, it was the Sixers' year, Moses Malone and uh, World Be Free, all, the, really a great team. But uh, Dr. J had the ball. He was on one side of the, the backboard. And he, he took off in the air, went behind the backboard, and reemerged with his arm on the other side and flipped the ball in the basket. It was, it was the craziest thing we'd ever seen. Definitely one of the iconic highlights of Dr. J's career, that behind the backboard, you know, r- ridiculous uh, play at the end of the, the Laker game to ensue the sweep for the Sixers. Never forget that and how happy freaking Doug was that night. And then after that, we're, we're kind of leaving the place, and we just saw two bloody people. One was being carried out. The other one was being ushered out. Some kind of violence went on, man. It was the type of stuff you never see at a Grateful Dead show. Um, it didn't interfere with the show. The show was like the most peaceful dancing thing, but this was like an after show thing. These bloodied people were being carried out of the, the Roseland. I don't know if uh, Jimmy Coonan and the Westies came down and settled the score or something, man. But it was, it was pretty insane uh, for, after such a brilliant night. But two things I'll never, I'll never forget at the end there. And then uh, the following night, June first, another hot night back in the Roseland. Just a totally different feel to this show. And this show, probably more guitar jam than the, the night before. I think the reason I picked the night before to be the number seven show in the book was I had Cape Cod from the same tour as number two and the first Roseland show at number seven. I couldn't put another Rose. I, you know, in five days, I can't have three shows taking up the top 12 shows of, of all time in, in my Garcia Band book. So, but this one is definitely as good as as the first night. Just a complete different flow to it. it, it I mean, Garcia was like incredibly psyched. The band's totally on, but just a different emotional feel, like an aggressive tone to the show. Not not as lovey dovey as the first night. So they open up with um, "I'll Take a Melody," and man, Je- Jerry's on fire right from the beginning, jamming away. Everything's going the extra distance. And second song is "Harder They Come." And this one, probably as good as the one the night before. Just It's so crazy to start off a show, melody, harder they come. And the harder they come, they're just jamming at you like second song, blowing your head off. It's just, it's so, the, the Garcia band, in these days, they would just come out and uh, just blow you away with the incredible jams right from the get-go. Third song, They Love Each Other. And once again, like the night before, this what this might be the second best version ever compared to the night before. Just a, you, you gotta check these versions out, man. Like uh, Garcia's just his, his playing is incredible. I got the first night on my Deadology podcast page, but uh, this second this second show is is definitely one to be downloaded and, and reckoned with. Incredible. Uh, Gamora's fourth and Run for the Roses closes out the set. So it started this the set started out very heavy. A lot of long, uh, great tunes, and uh, ended a little quicker. So the so the first night definitely had the better first set, but um, Gar- Garcia comes out for vengeance in this second set. Man, the, the second set from June first, nineteen eighty three, is one for the ages. Pretty close to that second set from Cape Cod that I that I think might be the best individual Garcia band set of all time. So set two. In the Roseland, June 1st, starts off with Rhapsody in Red. Sail away on that Rhapsody in Red. And uh, Jerry's taking no prisoners, man. It's just, uh, this is, uh, the first night was like, there was was like a 
bright spirit in the room. He was, he was loving being in the Roseland Ballroom. Night two is business as usual, and it's definitely a little darker, but he knows he's in New York City, and he's giving it his all with the Jerry Garcia band. Um, you know, Khan, these guys are playing incredible. Rico, such an amazing drummer. Uh, so this Rhapsody in Red is just blazing, man. They just come out and and uh, all, all business, man. Uh, the, no, nothing personal. Just like, we're the Jerry Garcia band. We're going to have to blow your heads off. <laughs> it's it's such a great Rhapsody in Red. Probably, I think it's the best one I, I ever heard. Uh, to start the second set. As I was listening to this, you know, I couldn't believe it. I'm driving down the road listening to this in the car. I'm just like, wow. Um, I couldn't believe I was there for this. It's that hot. So uh, Rhapsody in Red kicks off the second set. And, and then right away, it's like they go for the jugular on this night. Don't let go in the second spot. You know, one of the major Jerry Garcia band songs. And it's so interesting what the Garcia band did with this song, man. Just like Roy Hamilton... Uh, had a hit song with this in the late 50s. I think the original writer was Jesse Stone. Um, you know, and they, they take this fun little song, Hold Me Tight and Don't Let Go. And, and you know, after Jerry does his little Hold Me Tight, Don't Let Go, where he mimics his guitar, does a little call and response with himself, they just go off on this, like, well, most of the versions anywhere from, like, a 10 to 15-minute voyage this one at the at the Roseland is the longest jam, and then they don't let it go. They just keep going and going. It's it's very linear. It almost doesn't change uh, change course. Like when I saw the version from Music Mountain, which is a, is a beloved version, um, it gets very jazzy. It goes into a drum solo. This don't let go is just like straightforward. Just Garcia just pecking away for like fifteen straight minutes. I remember I was at the show, I smoked two cigarettes during the, the jam itself. Uh, luckily, I quit smoking uh, the following year, but uh, such an amazing, long version. It was just incredible how much they they were jamming, you know. It was like, how much guitar, how much improvisation can an audience take? And he was giving it all to New York City on, on this night, June 1st. Uh, so we got the incredible 20-minute 21 minute version of Don't Let Go. Uh, you know, it, it would have made Edgar Allan Poe scared. It was, you know, it was, it had like that dark feel to it. It was pretty incredible. Um, so after such a rock and guitar orientated first two songs, Jerry takes it down ballad time, you know, that one ballad. Uh, it's not simple twist of fate, it's, you know, not sitting here in limbo. On this night, they do the Irving Berlin song, Russian Lullaby. And it's so it's such a beautiful to hear, hear Jerry sing that. But this version, forget it. I'm listening to, listening to this again the other day, uh, driving down the road. I could not believe how great and consistent the guitar playing. You know, it's, it's not even like a slow ballad. Garcia was that hot on it. Con solo in there in the, in, in the middle. Um, usually it's hard to get overly excited about a, like, you know, a simple twist of fate or one of these songs that fits into this spot, but this Russian lullaby, there's nothing like it, man, the best. And then, um, oh yeah, as if the crowd isn't psyched enough, you know, lo loving what's going, to, going down the Roseland, it's a little time for Dear Prudence. And I don't know if any song hit the spot more at a Jerry Garcia band show than Dear Prudence. And especially in these years after Lennon's death, it was such a celebration and such a, I mean, Garcia brought the best out of that song. It's like he took that three minute song and just savored it. Uh, and the, the odd thing he was, he started playing it before, you know, before the murder of Lennon. But after that happened, it just, you know, the song took on a whole nother life. And uh, this is a awesome version, probably the best one I ever saw live. That's because I wasn't at Cape Cod. The one from Cape Cod, May 28th. That one's the bomb. <laughs> but this one is pretty close, man. They do a great job here. Uh, Dear Prudence. Um, you, you don't have to imagine too much, man. Just hearing a Dear Prudence with Jerry Garcia band on top of their game. Uh, just this second set. Everything. They got everything going. 
Um, definitely darker than than the first show, but a, a surplus abundance of improvisation and hot jamming from Garcia and these guys, these guys, Khan, Melvin, <laughs> Gregor Rico, and maybe the highlight of this entire Roseland show is a deal. I, I you know I I don't know how I could say that after all these great songs we've heard. But this deal that, that closes the set on June 1st, I'm going to play the jam for you, but it's insane. To me, this deal has, stands out. It's an outlier, kind of like the October 20th, 1984 Jack Straw from Syracuse. Uh, it, that Jack Straw is savage, just crazy jamming from the band. When you, if you pick it up midstream, it's almost hard to believe it's the Grateful Dead. It's hard to believe it's any band. It's just like it's the craziest, most aggressive jamming. It, almost like a, the score to settle kind of thing. Just like, you know, we, we got to prove something tonight. And this deal just goes on and on. And Jerry's kicking it. But when, when you listen to this, check out Khan and Enrico. Uh, Gar- Garcia, of course, is the best guitarist in the world at this point by far. And uh, he, he's doing his thing and just rolling along and playing incredible. But just Con and Enrico here, man, you just you listen to this and it's just how, how does this is the height of height of great improvisational mu- rock and roll music um, deal in the Roseland, June 1st. Everybody dig.
Yeah, that's definitely an outlier version of Deal. Uh, Garcia's uh, guitar work on that just so creative. He ignores all stop signs and all previous uh, routes and uh, routes to, to to for the Deal Jam. Just you know, t- new boundaries. You know, man, he was on fire that night. That's <laughs> That's about all I could say about that. Um, just incredible, incredible work. He was definitely psyched for these Roseland shows, uh, laying it online for New York City, man. Well, his heart and soul was into those these two nights. A night, any, anybody who was there will never forget it. I'll never forget it, man. This uh, show just is, is with me, the Roselands. And uh, it's just, oh, so we get an encore. Uh, you know, the, not leaving without an encore, how sweet it is to wrap up the whole experience. Uh, and another great version like the night before. There's there's no let up on, you know, especially on this night, man. Everything is jammed to the utmost. Um, you know, the show's a little darker than the night before, but, you know, can't beat it, man. Just 1983 Jerry Garcia band at the peak of their musical and improvisational powers. Great stuff. Uh, just uh, for, for New York City, he brought the consistency, creativity, and tenacity. All right, I'm starting to sound like Walt Frazier here, but uh, <laughs> hey, uh, Garcia deserves all the praise, man. Uh, so, yeah, some a couple of great shows at the Roseland. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget this tour, man. We went on to the uh, Capitol Theater uh, for an early late show after, an, after a night's rest. And then uh, the Chance Theater in Poughkeepsie. 600 it was the smallest place of all of them a 600 capacity place man they probably packed about 1500 deadheads in there uh but this little rinky dink but kind of cool bar in uh poughkeepsie new york bob dylan played there uh many years later uh the chance early and late show uh nobody will ever forget who was there will ever forget that not as hot as the roseland the roseland was one of a kind but uh great show at the chance and they wrapped it up at the Tower Theater. <laughs> Those Tower Theater shows, early, late show, spectacular, man. I, if I had a rate to start, I'd go Cape Cod, number one. Roseland shows, two and three. And then uh, probably the Tower Theater would, would be the four and five. Those those were great shows in Philly or Upper Darby, I believe it is. Upper Darby, near Philly. Um, but hey, man, another great week of uh, remembering the, the Jerry Garcia Band. Uh, next week's the final week for Jerry Garcia Band Month. Not positive. I got a few few different ideas, man, but whatever. It's going to be spectacular. I'm sure you know that. Um, hey, if you want to check out my book, Positively Garcia, Reflections of the JGB, it's on Amazon, my, my website, tangleupintunes.com. Um, you could search Howard F. Weiner. Uh, you find all the, all those books mostly on, on Amazon. And, um, hey, thanks for listening, man. Uh, All praise to the Jerry Garcia Band. And we'll be back next week. I'm thinking I haven't touched upon the Legion of Mary yet. yet. We might have to do the best Legion of Mary show uh, ever, a 1975 show. Thanks for enjoying the ride with me again. Until next week, peace out. (laughs) 